Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation uh, to Mr. Van uh, Nistelrooy and to the European Internet Forum. As you uh, just uh, said, I'm uh, Chao Meduk, the Director General for Communication. So the person who is in charge to coordinate the different and quite varied uh, communication services uh, here in, in the European Parliament. Uh, the Directorate uh, in General for Communication is uh, active on social media since uh, 2008 when we start preparing our communication campaign uh, for the European elections in 2009. Uh, uh, in my uh, department there is a, a quite a powerful uh, unit which is in charge of uh, web communications and uh, social media plus uh, social uh, media uh, managers in all our external offices, which of course is probably the best way uh, to show the importance that uh, uh, we, uh, we give, the way to, we consider uh, the importance of these uh, social uh, media tools in our uh, communication uh, activities. Uh, since 2008 and till now, uh, social media activities are one. Uh, of, um, I would say, one of our main ingredients in, in our media mix. And at least for three reasons, which are, of course, quite coherent with the interventions, uh, with the speeches that we have listened uh, uh, right uh, before. Uh, first of all, because the only uh, real way to communicate and to engage with citizens is to be where the citizens are and the citizens are in the social media, with uh, 2.2 billion uh, active uh, uh, Facebook uh, followers, 1 billion active Instagram <coughs> and YouTube uh, users. The world was, was never uh, more uh, connected than right now. Only parliament uh, administration accounts have all combined 5.5 million friends or followers. And um, almost all the MEPs have at least a Facebook or a Twitter account. Never before uh, this institution has been in real contact with so many people at the same time. Second, uh, because nowadays communication is only successful uh, if it works in both ways, from the institution to the citizens, but of course uh, from citizens to the institutions. And this is true for the European Parliament and this is even more uh, true for the members of the European Parliament. Uh, with uh, uh, social media, each single citizen has the opportunity to turn into our lobby, to become an individual uh, lobby. And many examples about that uh, are, have been experienced during the last legislature, maybe uh, the last one or the most impressive one uh, about the vote on uh, copyright. Uh, social media allows us to practice also social listening. We talk to citizens, but they can also talk back. We get to know what they think and their interests are, and this creates engagement, but even more important than that, it reinforces the legitimacy of the European Parliament. Third reason, uh, because social media has a real impact on democracy, and we have to try to make this impact positive. Social media helps to contact with people, uh, to discuss, to be exposed to more sources, to different opinions, and as you all know, this can be good, but this can also be uh, bad. I don't think it's necessary to remind the role of social media campaigns in the success of some, uh, let's call it, doubtful, uh, doubt, uh, doubtful uh, political uh, forces uh, and uh, candidates. But in any case, uh, social media connects people in ways that were not uh, imaginable 10 or 15 uh, years uh, ago. However, these are also uh, very challenging times. Uh, according to the last uh, Reuters digital report, only 23% of users believe in news posted on social media. And our latest Eurobarometer shows that 73% of the European Internet users are concerned with disinformation and with misinformation. Disinformation is an old friend uh, when it comes to information about the European issues. People, uh, in general, uh, know less about the European affairs than they know about European uh, national affairs or about uh, many other topics, so it's easy that they find uh, it quite hard to realize, to realize when they are uh, being uh, misinformed on these uh, European topics or European uh, affairs. 
this information has, of course, always existed, but social media has made it easier for this information to spread uh, quickly. At the same time, the way of using social media is changing too. Many users are turning to private channels to share news, Facebook <coughs> Messenger, WhatsApp. Facebook is so big now that uh, people, some people have friends who are not close enough to them, so they prefer to share news on closer groups and they prefer to avoid discussions, especially if it's a polarized topic, as for example, right now the case of uh, Brexit. In this particular context, it's not easy to communicate about the European Parliament or about the European Union, but at the same time, it's crucial to do it. Again, our latest, uh, latest Eurobarometer shows that 43 of the Europeans consider that being informed about the European Union and about the impact of the European Union is there in their lives. The impact in their lives would make them more in favor of voting uh, in the next European elections. The connection between being informed and a vote or decided to vote is quite strong and it will be probably stronger next time. And this is every day's challenge uh, for DigiCom in the Parliament to adapt to these new realities in the way we communicate through uh, social media. We have to focus in a more personal communication, putting more efforts in community management, uh, replying to direct messages from citizens, offering them more ways to connect, for example, by organizing uh, Facebook live chats uh, with uh, members. Only last year they reached uh, 56 million users and led to 270,000 interactions. It's quite impressive. Uh, the way we are communi communicating is also changing as well. We produce better educational content, especially multilingual uh, videos, which are uh, bringing increased and better quality engagement. Only last year have brought uh, 210 million uh, views. And these changes can also be seen in the digital information campaign that we are putting into place ahead uh, of the European uh, elections. For the first time, for example, in the context of uh, this uh, communication campaign, uh, the social media version of uh, our videos look more important uh, for us than uh, the videos to be heard on uh, TV. We put a uh, special focus on youth, which is mostly quite pro-European, and it's also uh, quite likely to abstain from uh, voting. Uh, the member, Pavel, just tried to uh, remember what happened uh, during the Brexit vote. Uh, this is something which could be also at some point and in some countries the reality also for the European elections. Uh, well, as I say, as we said in the Digicom, uh, uh, young people belong to what we call the weak abstainers. And then our content is uh, data driven with uh, topics which are chosen based on the concerns indicated by the citizens in the, in the Eurobarometer surveys and spotted in our social media listening. And this is important and this is sometimes very difficult. We try to switch from our own priorities or what we could consider the priorities of this house, the priorities of the institution, to the real priorities and to the real concerns of the citizens. Again, it's difficult, this is a political house, uh, but it's the way or it's the only way to be uh, really in touch with uh, those millions of citizens. And we share efforts with many uh, others, not only with other institutions, uh, it's not only us informing digitally, in this time we are working also in what we call uh, the ground volunteers, uh, who are posting on social media themselves, who can reach uh, their friends, their family and close circles in a more personal, in a more uh, meaningful way, something that an institution cannot do or cannot do easily. Uh, you probably saw around the parliament uh, some uh, uh, posters, uh, some information about what we call this time I'm voting. This time I'm voting, it's not the slogan of the next communication uh, campaign on the European elections, but it's uh, the name of the website, it's the URL of a website which is there just to create this community, to use this uh, possibility of having people who don't belong to the European Parliament, who are not members of the Parliament, who are not the staff of the Parliament, who are, don't belong to the political groups or to the political parties, but who are engaging or who are interested in engaging with European elections, who are engaged with democracy and who are engaged with uh, participation. Yesterday we reached 100,000 subscribers in this website, which was started in July, so it's uh, uh, increasing uh, 
daily and in a quite uh, an interesting way. And 10% of these people are real volunteers, are real activists, people who offline and even online decided to uh, mobilize for the EU elections of uh, the EU in general. And this is probably among all the many things that we are doing and that we will do for the European elections, uh, the one which is uh, closest to this idea of a citizens' engagement in democracy thanks to internet and to social media. Thanks a lot and of course I will be more than happy to answer two questions during uh, the debate. <coughs>